protection. And on a number of occasions, um, you know, I had the, the privilege of meeting the Queen. And so many people have said that, that she was such a, an easy person to get on with. And for most people, you know, she was completely out of touch. And nobody, nobody sort of had that chance of actually meeting her. What we see now, these sort of miles of people queuing that have never met the Queen but are prepared to stay out, you know, upwards of 10, 12 hours to just simply file past her coffin. And, um, but they, would have, they will do so because they have this sort of tremendous respect. When I was working there, we, we had this tremendous respect. But I always acknowledge, you know, and remember the fun that even our Queen could, could generate. And um, I, I remember one, one occasion in, in, uh, in Sandringham, fun enough, when, when the queen, queen Mother was alive. We were all having a sort of a, a lunchtime at, um, at Wood Farm at the time. And the Queen Mother suddenly sort of stepped in with her sticks and said, is it possible to watch the 2.30 at Lingfield? This is wonderful. At which point the Queen came in and said, Mother, get out, let them have their lunch alone. Of course, we all started laughing. But, you know, it was that sort of very friendly approach that I think people remember. And, um, and exactly what Neil was saying, and, and all, everybody here tonight, will just have these sort of very fond memories of a woman, and I think you know the the king now, um, with the long term apprenticeship that he's had, uh, it's a very difficult act to follow. Um, but I do think actually that uh, I, I think the beginning so far I think puts him in a very good stead, and I think that he will take certainly a lot that that his mother has shown already. That that I, I think is a well, good yeah. And you, you last time you were on, you spoke very generously about Charles. Uh, you, you'll have known him well because you were there to protect both of his sons initially and then, of course, his wife, Diana. And you said, look, he's a really decent, decent guy. He's very sincere. Uh, he has, uh, you know, he's a human being, isn't he? He makes mistakes. Uh, even in the last few days, he, he lost his rag over the fountain pen that started leaking. Uh, he has a short fuse, doesn't he? Do you think we'll see more of that? Well, I think that was a classic, Prince. And I think, you know, most people found that entertaining because, yeah. to be honest, I mean, traditionally, who would nowadays want you know, ink wells. You know, I was expecting some sort of feathers to come out, which would cut himself a quill to sign <laughs> it off. But, you know... Maybe I, a pigeon would be nice. Yeah, it could be. But I, I think that, you know, it's a new role for him. And, you know, I, I think... And he wants everything to go perfectly. I know, but politically, mm. you know, he's, he's, he's had a very, very active voice, particularly on matters to do with climate change and architecture. We know all that. Now, you know, is he, is he going to be silenced? In a way, I, I don't think he should be. I think that he's actually put across some very, very valid points, particularly about climate change. So he needs to find some way of convening and convincing Parliament that, OK, I'm now the king, but actually, I haven't forgotten, I still have these views about certain things. But I think he'd be shrewd enough with the right advice to, 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 to not disappear into the ether, not say something. But I do think that, uh, yeah, I think th that he has some very valid points. But, but, but is that true? Because we know the Queen had views on everything, but she kept her counsel for seven decades. Uh, isn't the danger that if Charles speaks out about climate change, those who are concerned about the proposed measures will start to resent the monarch? Well, I don't, I don't think so, Mark. I think that, 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 that he can find a way, um, you know, as I say, convening a, a, a way through to, 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 to put these points across, to make sure that these things aren't forgotten. I mean, it's such a huge issue for, mm. for all of us. And I don't think that he can, in his kingship, can just suddenly forget about that. Because it, he, he will, it but he'll have to do it. He'll have to do it differently, won't but he? He'll have he to do it with a light touch, I suppose. Well, he'll do it. He could do it, you know, through his son, through the Prince of Wales. Mm. You know, he is about to inherit the prince's trust and the duchy and so forth. You know, he could become, you know, his father... He could become the voice to making sure that all what the king thinks is actually moved through um, his son in the Prince of Wales. I mean, I think, you know, that's what he's be thinking. I'm always certain of that. For sure. And, and just a final thought on, on the queen as we reflect. It's the first time that this programme's been on air since her sad passing. So we're just reflecting on, on this human being. And we've talked a lot about the institution, the tradition, the history... Um, we were just lucky that we got this woman, weren't we? This, this human being, this character, um, a very unique personality, just a one-off. Well, I, I, a one-off almost, well, not by mistake. I mean, you know, I didn't, you know, I, when her, her father died, um, you know, that was, you know, really a, a sort of real change. Um, but, you know, what she's, she's, she did throughout her, 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 her reign was, you know, this sense of duty. Everyone keeps talking about a sense of duty and, you know, non-political. But, um, you know, she has, you know, sort of harnessed this, this, this feeling of warmth with everybody. I mean, as I said, 
But look at the, the thousands of people that have, have, have queued, not only to see her lying in state, but and I've been at the media centre in, in London this last week, and there are literally thousands upon thousands of people. We talked last time, Mark, about the solemnity and the peace, the way that this is happening. I mean, from a security standpoint, you know, the police have been very worried about this. Simply, how do we police, you know, thousands upon thousands of people? But there have been very, very few incidents that have caused a problem. But because of the respect, generally, yeah. the, the, the public at large held the, 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 the monarchy. I think you're right. Apart from a few critics in the United States, uh, the, uh, the Republicans have very much uh, wound their necks in, and, and rightly so, and that's a debate for another day. And, uh, and of course, um, Monday is the funeral. You'll be going. Well, I won't be at the funeral. Right? No, I, I shall be commentating there with... Oh, I see. You're, you're covering it exactly. for media. But so you'll be, you'll be in attendance, as it were, uh, as, a, as an observer. But at the same time, you're connected to the family. You've worked for them for a long time at the highest level as Diana's bodyguard. What are your emotions about the day that lies ahead on Monday for you? Well, my emotions will be for their family. I mean, mm. and, and William and Harry particularly. Um, I think William's already said in discussions with people at Sandringham today that, uh, you know, that walk behind um, Her Majesty recently reminded him so much of what it was like when his own mother died. I mean, and this, of course, is played out internationally on this sort of world stage. Um, so it's, you know, it's very difficult. But like all of the royal family that will be there in attendance on Monday, it, uh, it, is, it is a duty, and it, it's what they are sort of effectively bred to do. It's a, yeah. And so that doesn't stop them thinking of how personal that is, or anybody else for that matter. It's, mm. uh, it's a very public duty that um, I know that the, the, the king and his children and his own siblings uh, will be there, and it will be in a very emotional time. Um, the boys have been reunited on this sad occasion... It's my impression that Harry could build bridges in the next few weeks, the months to come. But would it be your view that if the book is published, it's game over for the Duke of Sussex? Well, this is interesting. Is he, is he in the last chance saloon? Ah, well, he, 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 he could well be. I mean, it, it's, this has been the centre of a discussion the last 24, 48 hours. My own view is, I mean, we, we're now told that this book is going to be delayed publication. I, I think that, that perhaps Harry should really reconsider, you know, this book in total. And I think maybe because he's been welcomed by his brother, he's been welcomed by his father, and generally he's been given some very positive publicity. And I've, I've looked closely at his face. I mean, I wouldn't say that he's a troubled man, but it's something that's giving him cause for concern, the fact that where he is, where his position it, within the royal family currently, the fact that he's not been able to wear uh, the uniforms, given that his, his own military background... And, and Ten the, years. ..and the representation... Two that, tours to Afghanistan. Well, exactly. And, and I, I think, you know, his father's been quite open about this. He, he wants him to be part of this new move forward, this, this new planned monarchy. Mm. Slim, and, slim down. And, exactly. And we had this discussion before, Mark, but mm. currently Harry is not, in, he's not part of this triangle. But I, I've got a, I just get a sense that... This, these last few days, I think things could well change. I hope so for him. I hope so for, for his father and his brother. And, you know, I'm not f failing to mention Meghan, but, you know, Meghan has to realise, too, that the role that he plays currently. And uh, I, I think there's a great deal of, of, of thought to be had here. Yeah. Insofar as the book is concerned, though, there will be those that say, yes, he should publish it. But I think at the moment, I think serious consideration should be, should be given yeah. uh, to not publishing it. it uh, people say, well, he's, he's there to make money. Mm. OK, we all need money, but I don't think he needs that money, to be honest. I think that uh, my own view is there'll be those that will disagree with me, and I do think that you should now seriously consider pulping the book. Yeah, pulping the book would be the price he might pay to save his relationship with his family and perhaps his future with the country. What is because he needs, to, he needs to win the people back too, doesn't he? Yeah, well, he was an incredibly popular member of the British mm. royal family. I mean, even right up at the time of his wedding... Yeah. Um, you know, he was, a, he was a man that, that, that was the sort of global icon. In, and, you know, he was more popular than the Queen at one point. Yeah. You know, he was very much the future. We all thought uh, in that wedding at Windsor, you know, as we said, with the, with the gospel choir and we've had this discussion before, you know, the vicar that never... <laughs>
talking. You know, it, it was an extraordinary <laughs> time. <laughs> yes. and, and everyone yeah. thought, well, look, this guy is for the future. And so, Meghan was the new Diana, what, well, if that's not... If that's not um, you know, an insulting thing to well, say. I don't think it is. I mean, she was a, a, a Diana in the sense that she was popular and, you know... And beautiful and fresh and different. Yeah, there were parallels, but, weren't there? But that's not the case now. And there are a lot of critics mm. and a lot, lot of very negativity said about Meghan and Harry. But I, you know, with, with, with not a great deal of evidence, but I understand the interest in the, in, in, in the But what about those howlers in the Oprah interview? I mean, you must have been horrified when you heard that. Oh, I mean, yeah, but, yeah, Contradicting they, the Archbishop of Canterbury about when they got married... Yeah. Allegations that couldn't be stood up in a court of law. Well, no, exactly. But, it wasn't but then great, you have was to, it? why why did they give that interview? Mm. Okay, I think that she wanted to give it, Megan wanted to give it. Um, Harry, when he came in halfway through that interview, looked decidedly uncomfortable yeah. in that. And and, and I, I just no from from the time that I spent with him, albeit when he was much younger. But 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 he was born to be a prince. He was born to be part mm. of this the, the, this family. And, and sadly, he's not part of it at all. But I think he's reflecting quite deeply at the moment. Who knows where this might end up? Mm. Um, I, I'm not going to predict anything, Mark, but I do think that this has been a real time of reflection for him. Mm. And uh, I think the future is probably a little bit brighter for him now than it was before he came here. Uh, with almost 200 presidents and prime ministers uh, visiting from around the world on Monday, this has got to be among the biggest security challenges in the history of this country. Well, I think it's been said all today. I think uh, senior police officers and, and government officials said this is the biggest single um, uh, event that we've ever had to police. Um, 200 um, visiting uh, personnel, VIPs... That Including the, the small matter of the United States of America. Uh, listen, there's no way that President Biden was going to get on a bus and travel <laughs> to Westminster Abbey. But, you know, listen, I've worked with the Americans over many, many years, and we've always had a great reciprocal arrangement with the American Secret Service. You know, that side of it never worries me, because they'll do their own thing wherever they go. Yeah. Um, but look, the one thing's for certain that, um, you know, the Met Police, the government, the Secret Service have worked tirelessly over many, many years with this Operation London Bridge, and, and equally with many other sort of state, state functions. Yeah. We've, we've been very successful. Given the, the hundreds of thousands, if not millions, that will convene on central London on Monday, yes, of course, there will be skirmishes, there will be minor outbreaks. But, you know, be rest assured, and I say this from my own work experience, working with major operations, that, you know, and there's a huge cost implication, of course, but, it, but I don't know of any other service in this world that could, could police and front an operation like this and be successful. Uh, uh, will there be concerns about protesters, the likes of Extinction Rebellion, insulate Britain? Uh, is that a concern? Uh, and what about the perennial threat of terror? Well, there's always going to be the threat of terrorism. Uh, and, you know, I was speaking with someone this morning. You know, there, there is a concern um, about, you know, some terrorist act. It's the perfect occasion for somebody that, that wants to sort of hatch that sort of activity, given the occasion, given the publicity, etc. But, you know, this will all be, this will all be part of Operation London Bridge that, that, that's been ongoing now for, for decades. And, you know, it, it was reviewed when I was serving. And so, mm. you know, be rest assured, and everybody should be rest assured, that, that, that what has to be done will be done. And there may be a great deal of inconvenience to members of the public, you know, greater road closures, etc. I mean, when we look recently at this 10-mile queue that's been snaking its way around the, the, the Thames. You know, thankfully, you know, nothing has gone wrong there. Yeah. But because we've had to rely equally on, on, on sort of private security firms because, effectively, the Yard ran out of police officers. So it, that's how big this operation has become. Yes, and we've seen, for example, the uh, very, very uh, competitive derby. It's not quite a derby, but it's an it's a, it's a iconic uh, rivalry in football. Man United Leeds has been postponed on Sunday because forces from around the country will be deployed to the capital. Well, yes, I mean, it's great. The other day I was down at the media centre there and I saw officers from Dorset, officers from Wales. I mean, 
there's been a huge influx um, yeah. of police simply because... But the, Met, know, the Met can't do this on their own, Well, they? Could, of course they're not, even with a, a force of, you know, nearly 30,000. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a huge capital city. Um, so we've had to draw from the resources of the Conservatives. But what, I, what I've seen this time, which is the first time around, was of this use of private security firms, you know, to, to assist yeah. the police. We, we, we have no choice, Mark. Yeah. But I, I'm confident that... Uh, this will go off without incident. I yes, think, yeah. I, I, and, and, and please God, you're right. And of course, what is great in terms of the authorities, the government's handling of this, the Met Police, is that it's money, no object, to keep the people of this country safe as we mourn the passing of the Queen. Mark, you, you cannot really, I think in this day and age, particularly with an event such as this, hmm. start putting a price on how do you police the monarch's funeral. It, it, it's irrelevant. You know, the, 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 the facts, the actual manpower will be there at any cost. And that's why we've seen this draw in from the Constabularies and, and, you know, to police this event. Um, Ken, stick around, because later in the programme, I want to ask you about how Charles is going to lead the country, what sort of king he's going to be, uh, whether he's also going to be a more tactile monarch, uh, more direct with, uh, with uh, the people of this country, hugs, kisses, that kind of thing. Uh, and also, uh, was he right to fire 100 staff from Clarence House? We'll discuss that as well. Lots more to come from a man who knows the royal family intimately well, the remarkable Ken Wharf, Diana, Harry and William's former personal bodyguard.